Hello everybody and welcome back to On Point HQ and I'm going to start with a little tale. Last year at CrackCon, uh, which is our podcast gaming event, uh, I had a game of bolt action against my buddy Rich and he used his French resistance and he won. He, he, he annihilated me quite convincingly. <laughs> I lost really pretty bad. Um, but I really liked the look of, his, of his, 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 his force, his French resistance. They were primarily Warlord Games um, metal um, resistance, French resistance. The few other manufacturers thrown in, but I liked the way it looked and I liked the way it played. And I wasn't really planning on starting a resistance army, but after that game, I really did want to start a resistance army for bolt action. So we gave me an excuse to buy this. So this is the, the French resistance box by War Games Atlantic. And it's an absolute stonker. A really, really good kit. Let's have a, let's have a quick look at one of the sprues that comes with it. As you can see, so many options. Head, bodies, accessories, you know, you got a light machine gun, rifles, uh, pistols and submachine guns, and you get four bodies on each sprue. But look at the they're really crisp, really good details on there. There we go, look at that. I was made up when I got this and I've really enjoyed working with it. The only downside from a bolt action perspective is there's not many rifles on here. So on the screen now you will see from bolt action easy army. Um, a sort of an army list um, or a the, the the loadout for a, a resistance squad and you can you can take them really big squads and you can but you can only take up to four submachine guns and that's including the nco and if you want to run large squads you're going to need rifles and like i said there's there's not too many on here i think there's two on each sprue so i thought well i have got an absolute metric ton of bolt action spares knocking around here <laughs> Um, so I thought, well, what can I do? Now, I'm I'm not the first person to have done this by a, a long, a long shot. I've seen plenty of people on the Bolt Action Facebook group uh, using Bolt Action bits and pieces on these on these figures. Um, so I'm not I'm not really a trailblazer here, but I just thought I'd do a video to show you exactly what I've done, um, the bits and pieces I've used, and some of the some of the the, the, the ideas that I've come up with. Now, the the main plastic kits I've used for this are. British Infantry, British Airborne, and US Airborne. There's a good mix of, of, of rifles on there, and I, I wanted to use Allied weapons, so Lee Enfields and Garands and Stens and uh, Thompsons, rather than the, the German equipment, because I like the idea of the, the weapons being dropped in um, for the resistance. So let's have a look at what I've done. So here's the first one. So as you can see, they, they scale really quite well. Slightly chunkier, the arms are slightly chunkier than the War Games Atlantic arms, but from three feet away you're not going to really notice that, are you? Um, and they, they they fit well, they really do fit well. So these arms, the, the, the right arm is from uh, the British Infantry box, and the left arm is from the British Airborne. You need to do a bit of tidy up on the cuffs to even them out. But something simple like that, and you've got a character, for, a, 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 a miniature just really full of character. So I've used the um, the torso and the head from the War Games Atlantic box and just added a couple of a couple of arms from from the two British kits. Up next we have this chap with his rather fetching bowler hat. <laughs> so the arms here are, are they're both from the, the the US Airborne box. We've got the the right arm holding the ground and the left arm is just at rest. As you can see, there's, there's, there's buttons on there, but they, they fit well with civilian clothing. That's another big thing, is these arms, they're quite civilian looking. And here's another one. Now, some of the, the, the sort of the two arm pieces don't exactly go together well. Um, so you may struggle with some. As you can see here, it's quite a gap there. So I'm gonna need to fill that in with some, some green stuff or some milliput. But again, it works well, and you know the, the pose looks good. Again, the, both these arms are from the U.S. Airborne box, um, so it it's a bit of trial and error. A bit of you know, it, will it fit? Um, like I said with this, just a bit of a bit of modelling putty in there, and you know, I'm good to go. Let me show you someone. These have been primed, and yes, I do prime in brown. <laughs> I don't want to alarm anyone. <laughs> so again, more arms from the the U.S. Airborne U.S. Airborne box here. You've got the, the ground there, and sort of the he's looking in his pocket or checking his watch or something. But again, they just fit. They, they fit really well because they're quite civilian looking. 
and it's been it's been good seeing what does work so mix, mixing and matching um to see what i can come up with again is another another civilian one so us airborne again the us airborne box really fits well with these as you can see the the actual cuffs uh, and, and the arms and the sleeves are quite civilian looking they go really well with the with the the, the, the civvy jackets and there he is with his grand and the the actual heads in the war game Atlantic box are brilliant full of character so i've really enjoyed working on these how do they paint up uh, rem oh, remarkably well actually so these are these are three that i've painted to focus there we go so the first one here again arms from the airborne box with his garand pointing now these two as you can see it's a pigot team so you can take you can take allied anti anti tank options in in the the resistance lists so the, all of these are from the the british airborne oh sorry not british infantry box rather as you can see so we've got the guy carrying the pigot there and the guy carrying the ammunition so all I've done is I've snipped off the 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 bayonet from that arm. It, it didn't it didn't look didn't look right with with a bayonet on. So that's what I've done. As you can see, they 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 paint up really nice. It felt it it was a bit strange just painting civilians. Actually, <laughs> it's not very not very often I get a chance to paint civilian clothes. So this was quite uh, quite an opportunity. But there we go. So that's what um I'm sort of currently working on in between other projects. Um, I, I can say I'm really enjoying. The mixing and the matching of the plastic kits what works what doesn't uh, as i mentioned some of the ones where there's two arms you, you might struggle a bit in in getting them to fit as you can see with this one okay. so it, it, it let's focus on that it does fit it's just not going to be snug as the other ones well there we go like i said i'm not the first person to have done these and i certainly won't be the last but i thought i'd do a just a short video showing you exactly what I've I've done with mine. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. You found it interesting. If you've got any comments or questions about this or wargaming in general, just pop them down below and I'll certainly respond to all comments. But as always, thanks for watching. Do take care. May your dice roll well and I'll catch you all in the next video. So bye-bye for now.